I am very excited to be with you today as we close in on Thanksgiving vacation with a lot to be thankful for. We got started on the 2019-2020 school year when some of you began arriving on campus 11 weeks and two days ago. Classes began three days later and we have worked extremely hard and to great effect through this longer than usual fall. In certain respects, the time that has passed since opening day seems to have moved quickly. In other respects, this long fall has been a long fall, a chance to step away from the pace we keep and have three plus days off in a row for the first time since Labor Day weekend will be important for all of us. In reflecting on the time we have had together this fall, I'm proud of how we have engaged in all that has been on our plate. We have done well with the challenges we've faced. They've brought out the best in this community in so many ways. That has felt good. I've been particularly taken by the time we have shared in chapel with so many memorable moments and heartfelt messages making their way into circulation. Testament to the confidence we have in one another and the way we hear and care about what others have to share. That has felt good too. And how many schools collect well over 100 students to travel to two road tournament games and share in that experience with peers competing in those games? Not many. I heard over the weekend from someone who was at the games and wrote this to me, totally unprompted, and I quote, I do know a positive school culture when I see one. Your kids were so clearly connected to each other, a diverse group that was intertwined in all the best ways, coming together in an exuberant show of community. You could see and sense their care for one another, their devotion to the larger entity, end quote. Well said, I think, and further testament to what we are when at our best. As we head into this break, my heart is full, and I thank all of you for that. At the beginning of this school year, Mr. Chapman and I got together and took a look at all the open chapel dates in order to begin scheduling speakers and so forth for the year. I asked him to hold this date for purposes of being able to present the Richard F. Holmes chair to a deserving member of the faculty. This endowed chair is one of six we have at Brooks and has been vacant since Dusty Richard retired at the end of the past school year. When an endowed chair becomes vacant, Mr. McVeigh and I invite the faculty to share nominations of colleagues they admire with the two of us and explain why they believe the colleague or colleagues they are nominating are worthy of holding one of our six endowed chairs. All five of the current shareholders earned this distinction by virtue of the respect and admiration they have gathered at Brooks in and out of the classroom and over the course of their substantial careers in education. They are seated in the front of the chapel this morning and I'd like to name each of them at this time. They are Douglas G. Burbank, Mr. Burbank holds the Hope H. Van Buren Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 1986. Lee P. Perkins. Ms. Perkins holds the Prince Charitable Trust Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 1998. Deborah R. Davies. Ms. Davies holds the Independence Foundation Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2000. Randall A. Hesse. Mr. Hesse holds the Waldo Holcomb Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2001. Dean P. Charpentier. Mr. Charpentier holds the F. Fessenden Wilder Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2008. This is the fifth occasion and seventh time I have enjoyed the privilege of presenting an endowed chair to a member of the faculty. These are among my very favorite chapels because what we do today is celebrate great teaching, broadly defined. 
Today we focus on the heart of what we spend our time on, day in and day out, teaching, learning, and growing in and out of the classroom. Our school has been and continues to be blessed to have a faculty with deep reserves of talent and an unwavering commitment to students, to doing all they can to help their students learn and grow, refine their own talents, discover new ones, and move steadily in the direction of being better versions of themselves. We all enjoy many privileges by virtue of being part of this community and knowing and working with one another in the many ways we do is certainly one of them. I believe beyond a shadow of doubt that when all of you who are students graduate and move on from Brooks to next steps in your lives, you will draw from the teachers, coaches, directors, advisors, mentors, and adults who have invested time and care in your life here in ways that will hold over the long haul. They will mean something and matter to you for the rest of your lives. Well, I tend to think that I'm not an authority on all that much. I do know that I have been immersed throughout my 30 years at Brooks in a sea of extraordinary teachers. I have wished on many occasions that I could be just a fraction of so many of them when observing and knowing their teaching, coaching, advising, and work as citizens and leaders in this community. Along the way, I do think I have come to know at least some of what makes a teacher great. So for what it's worth, I offer the following incomplete notion of what great teaching is at Brooks, at least what has inspired me to try to be better in my own right over the years. Great teachers know and continue to deepen their command of what I will call the tangibles. This can mean command of a discipline or subject area they're teaching, or a skill or competency they are developing in students, or an area they are passionate about beyond the academic day. It matters deeply to them that their students learn and advance. Their love of learning is infectious, and they share this strength generously with their students. Great teachers love and respect students. This is less tangible, I think, but really means that great teachers succeed in conveying to students that they care about them in ways that extend well beyond the classroom. They succeed in conveying to students that they are pulling for them at all times. On some level, your success is their success, not just measured by whatever grades or scores one earns by the end of a marking period, but by who and what you are in this community and those you become a part of later in your life. Great teachers challenge students and are shoulder to shoulder with them when those challenges are taken on. They push you through thresholds you might not have thought you could get through without their counsel and care. They believe in their students through thick and thin. That belief inspires students to reach for goals that might otherwise feel out of reach. Great teachers are confident and humble all at once. They are always open to new possibility. They acknowledge their fallibility and model vulnerability in ways that help students do the same. Great teachers are fair and kind and concern themselves with students who might be struggling on a margin of some sort, academic, social, emotional, spiritual. They are passionate about working with students in the school in ways that deepens understanding and belonging for all of us. Great teachers appreciate that there are lots of types of great teachers. We are not a school that seeks or desires a particular prototype. And the best teachers draw all the time from the strengths they see in others. Our school is rich with the diversity of teaching styles and how incredibly fortunate we are for that. Great teachers appreciate that reaching students 
in both the head and heart is what this is all about. They appreciate that this pursuit is occasionally measurable, but also invest in the aspects of their work with students that can only be felt. They care about the intangibles, find deep affirmation in working with students in between the lines, in unscripted ways, in the gray matter of this experience we have together, if you will. They opt in all the time. At Brooks School, we seek to deliver the most meaningful educational experience our students will have in their lives. We realize our mission because we have a faculty that cares about both what can be measured and what can only be felt. Both matter. Early in my tenure as head of school, an alum whom I admired a great deal shared with me a simple point that I have often repeated and believe still holds a lot of weight. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, John, all you need to have a great school is a great teacher, a great student, and a log upon which they can learn together. While I do see how some might argue the point is an oversimplification, or perhaps hopelessly nostalgic in ways that are not particularly forward thinking, I have always been drawn to his words. To me, this alum was capturing the essence of what great teaching is, human connection, inspiring others with passion, finding and leveraging the many sparks that exist in all young people. Great teachers do this routinely with great joy and generosity and to incredible effect throughout the lives of their students. We are overflowing at Brooks with teachers who would do well if all they had to work with was a log to sit on with their students. This is certainly true of the colleague I'm going to present the Richard F. Holmes chair to in just a few moments. She is all of these things. She is in total command of the tangibles, her subject matter, as all of her students would surely attest. The learning and growth of her students is a passion she wears fully and completely on her sleeve. She is exacting in all the right ways when it comes to these tangibles and the number of students who have learned more than they ever imagined they would while in her classroom are far too many in number to count. Her students love her and admire her and care about her because she has earned that love, admiration, and care by sharing the same with all of her students, by respecting them in ways they deserve, by believing in them in ways they know and feel. She is challenging tough even, and I suspect a number of her students have felt occasional exasperation, that might be an understatement, at the volume of work on their plate from her class. Yet they have never felt alone or on a limb without her there, shoulder to shoulder. There is no limit to how far she will extend herself to help a student. She is both confident in her approach in the epitome of a lifelong learner. She is always open to new possibilities, always looking for ways to be more effective in and out of the classroom with students. She learns from her peers all the time. She is fair and kind and completely devoted to ensuring this community continually expands to reach the full breadth of all who are members of it. She is an inspiration in this regard and walks the walk every single day she's here. She is exuberant and joyful and generous beyond measure. One colleague wrote, she is a phenomenal teacher and will work tirelessly to try and meet her students' needs. This colleague continued by saying, she inspires a love for learning and an appreciation for difference through her lessons. Another colleague noted her care for him as a colleague. He wrote of his beginning at Brooks and how she showed me kindness, patience, and valued my contributions. He went on to say, and I quote, she is the rare breed of teacher who manages to command the respect of her students without sacrificing the rigor of her standards 
in the classroom, end quote. A third colleague noted her excellence as a teacher, the fact that she has taught the full breadth of the curriculum in her department, first year students all the way to the advanced placement level and everything in between. He wrote, and I quote, she is involved with community building at Brooks by leading Alianza Latina in supporting students of color since she first walked on campus. She has created opportunities for students to not only thrive in the classroom, but become strong student leaders and advocates for their own community to become bridge builders, end quote. The philanthropy class she shares with Mrs. Dobbins during winter term has now connected dozens of Brooks School students to those in need in ways that have inspired a deep appreciation in these students to the importance of giving back, of helping others, of doing what we can to level the world in ways that are more just and equitable. This pursuit inspires her teaching and work with students every day. Her example inspires all who know her. I do not know a student who knows her and doesn't adore and admire her, even when they have a lot of work in her class. I've been grateful to count her as a colleague dating all the way back to when she joined the faculty to teach one section of Spanish in 2006. What an extraordinary moment of good fortune that was for Brooks School and all the students she has reached in the nearly 14 years that have passed since then. She is a marvel and a Brooks School treasure. I hope she stays here forever. On behalf of my colleagues and the school, I'm honored to invite forward to take her seat as the holder of the Richard F. Holmes Chair, Lillian Barthelmas Miller. Stay there. <laughs> okay, we're going to finish chapel today by singing the school hymn. And as soon as we finish singing the school hymn, Ms. Miller and her family and friends will make their way directly to the Dalsmer Room. And then all of you should follow first to thank and congratulate Ms. Miller and then to enjoy some snacks that are over there. Okay? <laughs> so the school hymn.